I love using old fabric and old sheets to make rugs. Today's video, I answer the top 10 questions that I get all the time on how to weave a rug. If you haven't caught any of my videos, I have plenty of videos that take you step by step by step on how to weave a rug. Today's video will give you pretty much everything you need. It's just going to go in a different order. I'm just going to focus on the, the hot questions that people ask when I put a video together. So check the links down below. I have quite a few different videos, everything from using blankets and jeans and grocery bags and uh, t-shirts, all sorts of ways you can do rugs and pretty much every time I get the same questions asked. Common question that I receive is how do you prepare your fabric and join them together? I use one and a half inch strips. This is a strip off of a sheet. Bed sheets are my favorite because you get a ton of yardage out of one sheet. But you'll need to join your fabric while you're weaving and join it while you're doing your warp. When you're doing your warp, join them ahead of time. When you're doing your weaving, join it as you go. And here's how you do that. So you take, this is the end of one strip, this is the end of the other strip, lay them straight on top of each other, and then fold it over a generous um, three quarters of an inch, maybe almost up to an inch. Then take scissors and just do a little quarter inch snip on the bend there, maybe a quarter inch, half inch snip. Lay them now going end to end and line up the little slit that you made. I put my finger through that. I take the tail of one of them and bring it through on the opposite end and pull through your tail and there you have a joined piece of fabric ready to weave. A question that I get asked is how much warp fabric do you need to prepare? When you're doing your warping, you want to have one large ball of fabric with all of them joined together so they can easily warp back and forth. So here's how you know. On your loom, measure the distance between the ends, your nail to nail. So this one is roughly 33 inches long. Take that times two, so we have 66 inches. Now count the number of nails you have, and on this loom there are 33 nails. So we're going to take the distance times two, so we have our 66. Take that times the number of nails you have, so I'm going to do 66 times 33, which comes up to roughly 2200 inches. So that is roughly 60 yards of strips of warp fabric joined end to end. Now that I have my warp uh, cut and attached continuously end for end, I have it in a ball. And now you can see why it is super handy to have a ball already made so that you can warp your loom. question that I have been asked countless times is where do you find the steel rods? These steel rods are the ticket to making a square rug. This is the loom that we use. Ross has a video, my husband has a video on the channel of how you can simply build this loom. Very, very easy to make. The secret is the steel rods that go down the edges that you weave around 
and it keeps your rug edges straight and your corners square. But I'm constantly being asked, where do you find the rods? They are in the fastener department. If you look, there's uh, usually a bin of flat metal and different pieces of uh, round stock. This is one eighth inch metal rod and you can find them in uh, various lengths. This uh, loom, I just needed to get 36 inch rods and it works. So get the rod that works for the loom that you have. I often get asked what size loom that we use. Ross built these uh, looms for me and I have two that I use all of the time. In fact, I just did a whole new kitchen set uh, for our house and I used two of the looms that are 18 by 33 and then I did one rug that was 24 by 44. But you can really make the loom any size you want. To be honest, I think we settled on those dimensions because that's the size wood uh, that I had available. So um, the dimensions, they're totally up to you. But again, ours are 18 by 33 and 24 by 44. How big of a rug can you make? The sky's the limit. I have a video on the channel that I show you step by step on how you can join rugs. And I believe I actually used these uh, rugs in that video that I found uh, in my stash. I have since taken them apart because I wanted this one to have fringe on it. But you can make coordinating or matching rugs and you just join them either on the end uh, where your nails were. You can also line them up side by side and you just take a strip of fabric and you just, um, I call it a whip stitch, I don't know if that's the technical term, but you can just join the rugs and it works fantastic. So check out the video um, on how I join these, but the answer to the question, how big of a rug can I make? How big do you want it to be? One of the top questions I get is the foam backing. The, the fabric makes the rugs a little slippery, so we put foam backing on the backs of our rugs. I slip stitch it on uh, with just regular thread. I have the link uh, below of the backing that um, I grab. It's just shelf liner. But the question I always get is, do I have to cut the liner off when I wash it? The answer is no. This is exactly how I put it in the machine. I put it on delicate so that it doesn't uh, spin too much and then I just line dry it and I have washed my rugs over and over again and they hold up fantastic. I'm going to show you how to start the first row, but this little demonstration here hopefully will help. So I'm going to take off this warp. When you're weaving, your first row needs to go between that loop that goes up over the nail. So pretend that you're taking your, your rug off your loom. Look, it's, it's locked in there, so your weaving is locked in. If you just went under those two, let's get this back up on the nail and I went under those two and over the next two and then under that and I take these off the nail and I'm like, okay, my rug is done. Your weaving is gonna slide right off. So I'm gonna show you how to do the first row, but it's important to understand the why is because you need to lock your weaving in. Okay, I have two colors joined together here so that you can see the weaving happen. So you always want to go around the rod. So I'm gonna put one color on one side of the rod and the other color on the other side. And I like to have my strands, oh, probably four or five foot long. You can do shorter, but four or five foot long works really good. So I have them on um, around the rod. And to start with, I'm gonna put my green underneath the nail, just like I described 
but while I'm back there, I'm going to push it underneath the nail of the next row. And so I'll just pull that through. But then I have my cream, which is the opposite, um, going to go on the opposite side. So my green went down, my cream comes up. And my green came out, so my cream goes back. But while I have it back there, I'm going to go underneath that nail again. Along with the question of going under the nail, I also get asked, you're going over and under two warps. I don't know um, if it would lay right if I went under one and over the other. It would be really, really tight. But if you're doing uh, thin strips, that might be what you wanna do. But yes, I go under two, over two, under two, over two, all the way across. So my green has came forward, my cream goes back, and my cream comes forward. So my green is forward here, and now it needs to go back there and come up underneath the next nail. And we just keep repeating that. The cream is forward, now it goes back and comes forward. And we just keep repeating under each nail. And so you don't have to pull your tail each time. So I, I'll go two or three um, warps before I pull my tail through. So here we go, I think that's probably far enough. And pull through the tails. And I'm gonna slide it up out. You can do this at the end, but I wanna slide it up so you can see what I'm doing here. And so now, talking again, I got ahead of myself. Okay, so and now we need to keep going. At the end of the row, I wanna show you how you go around the rod because um, this is a part of that same question of which hole do I go in when I go to row number two. So here we are at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my tail there. And now we're down at the end and we go around the rod, the um, rod that keeps your project square. We have to go around that at the end of each row. Okay, so I have my cream on the front and the green on the back. We just trade places. And so now my cream comes up and my green goes back. And while I'm back there, I'm gonna bring my green forward. And now we're ready to go back the other direction. So here I'm gonna show you that in slow-mo. Okay, so now it has created its own gap. You have two warp, two warp, two warp, all the way across your row. That is the gap that we are going to weave in all the way across. You don't need to separate them out or anything. We're going to just go all the way across, just like this. The question I get asked often is, how do you manage your loom? What do you set it on? Where do you weave at? I lean it up against a chair um, while I'm uh, weaving, but it can be anything. I go camping, I lean it up against a lawn chair. I'm in the house, I'll lean it up against the couch. I'm, I lean it up against a table. All you just need to do is be able to have it be comfortable height so that you can do your weaving. Common question is, do you weave from both ends of your uh, loom and meet in the middle, or do you weave all the way down in one direction? The answer is, 
whatever you want to do. You can do both. I prefer to weave in one direction. So I will weave till I can't reach it anymore. I'll, I'll heist this up a little bit on a, um, on a stool and then I will turn it over and continue weaving. At that point, I would be weaving up. And so that is my preference. I like to go all in one direction. And then when you get to the other end, you're just able to pull it through with a crochet hook. And I go in great detail that on that in my um, video of how to make the rug. But the answer to that question, I like going in one direction. Start at one end and go all the way to the other. People want to know how long it takes me to make a rug. This is something I absolutely enjoy doing in the evenings while I'm uh, doing TV time. So I will just sit and weave as, um, without even thinking about it. So to be honest, I have not set a timer on myself, but I have counted backwards on how many evenings um, it takes me to sit and do um, the smaller one. This is the 18 inch uh, by 33 inch rug. It usually takes me about, I would say roughly six hours of weaving on a rug this size. Obviously, um, the larger rugs take longer. And preparing your fabric, you have to add that into that time as well. Uh, but that's done um, pretty quick when I just stand at the cutting table and cut or rip the strips while we're uh, driving. So for um, time's sake, I would say about six hours of weaving. Add another maybe hour for getting all of your strips put together and joining your warp. But uh, it is truly, as you can see, a pretty fast process. Well, I'm sure that's not all of the questions that you have when it comes to weaving a rug, but hopefully I answered the bulk of them. If you have more questions, please comment down below. If you have some projects, I would love to see them. So if you want to, email me pictures at diyonthehouse at gmail.com. But as always, we appreciate you watching DIY on the House. If you have any other questions, again, comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks a million.